Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I hope you are all doing well. Today is chemo day, and I am terrified. There is a long list of reasons why I am terrified. So let's just get started and going over it. I didn't really focus on chemo cute today because of my list of things that are terrifying me. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wore whatever, but I mean, it's kind of cute. I wore a bracelet stack that I like. Gratitude, black, hope, and a ladybug. I don't know if it's showing. Not really. <laughs> Okay, so the reasons I am terrified. One, it's chemo day, and I don't like getting chemo. I'm already sick to my stomach thinking about it. Two, scan results. We're still waiting on scan results. Are we gonna get them from our doctor today or not? Probably. I don't know. I hope we do, and I hope they're good, but I don't know. Um, the other thing... Three. Am I going to be put back on steroids? We'll see. We'll see. I don't want to be. I hope and pray I am not put back on steroids. But if they say that... Then they know best. Then we'll just go with it. Mm, but I really hope no more steroids. My extra shortness of breath and high heart rate, is that going to freak my team out to where they send me in for a bunch of scans and tests today to where I'm here for the entire day again? Hope not. I hope not. That's really scaring me. Any other little things or can I move to my big thing? What's the big thing? Okay, I think that's it. We're going to move to the big thing. So, this Saturday, October 15th, there is a lung cancer walk. So, it's to raise awareness for lung cancer research and raise money for lung cancer research. And I'm going to walk it, hopefully. It'll be three days after chemo, so I'm not sure how well I'll, I'll feel might do a wheelchair or something, I'm not sure. Anyways, I'm going to attend this event and we've raised money. We're very close to our goal on how much we wanna raise. If you'd like to donate to Cancer Research, I will leave a link to where you can donate in the description box. The fun thing is it's like, it's attached to your team. So yeah, so you can see my team. So they can donate on behalf of you. Or you can foundation. join my team virtually. Or they can join it. Or you can join my team virtually, and then you participate. It's Saturday morning, just for a few hours, and you can be a part of it. Or if you're in the area local to San Dimas, you can attend it in person. Mm -hmm. So I'll have the information for that in the description box. Yep. If you're interested, I appreciate it. I'm so grateful. You know, I've discovered while having lung cancer that lung cancer is one of the least funded cancers and it is one of the most common diagnosed cancers or is it the most common diagnosed i think it is the most but i don't want to quote myself on that it, it's at least one of the most commonly diagnosed Pretty prevalent, yeah. cancers so any help would be so greatly appreciated it'll help save my life and everyone else with lung cancer who matters yep but the terrifying thing is not the walk itself that's fine although i'm a little scared i won't be able to hang with how sick i'll be from chemo but anyways the event planner for the event the walk contacted me and let me know that she would like me to speak at the event what do you think of that let's start out by saying i hate public speaking and I'm terrible at public speaking. I'm not good at it. So I'm pretty terrified. I would love this opportunity. <laughs> he loves public speaking. But um, 
you're better than you think, and um, <laughs> she's already working on a, a little speech. Mm -hmm. um, it's a three to five minute speech, and when I time myself, I get five and a half minutes, so hopefully that's okay. And they just want you to share your experience with your diagnosis and your battle and all the stuff you're going through, and uh, just just share about it to everybody, so that'll be fun. Yeah, and if for some reason I like flop and cannot do it, like I just can't do it for some reason, then he said he'll come up and do it for me. I will. So that's nice. <laughs> I think you'll do great. My goal is to do great at it. Oh, you will. But I have this thing when I do public speaking, I start getting really short of breath, like even before cancer. This is like in high school, and I get like short of breath. I like forget to breathe or something. <laughs> And then I talk really fast, and it's just, mm -mm. In high school, I remember we all, like, wrote notes for each other and suggestions how to improve your public speaking skills. After a presentation. After a class. presentation, yeah. And all of my notes said, take a deep breath, slow down, don't forget to breathe. And I was so embarrassed. I hated it. No, I never got those notes. No? <laughs> Did you guys help each other with notes like that? Yeah, I usually got like, um, good job. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just enjoy speaking and public speaking. Oh, but wow. Maybe that's Must why. Must be I, nice. Maybe that's why I became a teacher. I, I like being in front of the crowd. Yeah. But you're, you, you're better than you give yourself credit for, so. I am, like, I can, if I were, like, by myself in the room, I could do a great job at it. But it's once I'm in front of everyone and it's on a stage, it's on a stage. That makes it worse. I'm just going to be so nervous. And you're potentially, I think, your oncologist will be there. Yeah, and possibly my oncologist He's will be one there. of the chairs. I, I know my nurse practitioner said he'll be he'll there. He'll be there, so this should be cool. A lot of pressure. A lot of pressure on her, but... My chest is looking great, the rash. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that will help me. With all the decisions with, today? Yeah. Mm. You can at least point to that and say it's doing well. I think we're both terrified for results today and whether or not we will get them because we were pretty silent the whole way here. Just like yeah. zoning out thinking about, oh shoot, right? pretty nervous today but it is what it is whatever happens we'll come out on the other side we have to so mm -hmm. we'll just if they tell you to go to a million scans we'll go to the million scans if they tell you the results Hopefully aren't that not. great then we'll just okay if they tell you the results are great good if they tell you the results are blah fine if they say we don't have results okay at least you get to go to chemo hopefully hopefully all right we will let you guys know what's happening Let's, let's go. minor detour um, there's a bunch of fluid in my lung the scan showed that on the outside so that's why I'm having increased shortness of breath so we are heading to get the fluid drained I've never had this happen before so I'm pretty terrified it's very common <laughs> yeah we'll give you more info later okay I am in the ultrasound room where I guess they drain the fluid and I'm by myself and I'm nervous. I might get brave and try to film some of it, so we'll see.
Okay, so hopefully you can hear me. Um, as usual with our chemo days, <laughs> it never really goes the way it's supposed to, but that's okay. Um, so we went in, blood looked good. Um, we finally got the scan results, which Jenny will talk more about it. Um, and then they saw that there is, uh, it's called a pleural effusion. Uh, it's where fluid starts to kind of build up around your lung, um, which when she got diagnosed, I, I joined a lung cancer support group online. And I can't tell you how many people on there said that they had to get their lung drained and they have fluid and it's very very common when your lungs unhappy sometimes fluid can show up there at least from my tiny tiny knowledge uh, that i have that's that's kind of what what we've gathered but um so she's now getting fluid drained from her lung we know nothing about it they said oh we don't want to do it to you on the same day you have chemo and of course my wife being who she is she said it's fine just do it just knock it out all in one. Um, so she is currently in there. I couldn't go back there with her. Um, and she is getting the fluid drained. Don't know what the process is. I don't know what she's going through, but I hope she's okay. I know she will be. And then they're gonna um, test that fluid. Make sure it's uh, okay. Um, and see, you know, I'll let her talk more about what, what we're doing next later on but I just wanted to give an update middle of the day um, waiting around for her to do that so I know she's brave I hope she's okay and um, I pray that it doesn't hurt that's all I ask but he did say this would hopefully relieve some of her shortness of breath which would be awesome because it has been pretty intense lately but prednisone is still off which she's really happy about and she still got approved for chemo today which she's also happy about so We'll go from there. All right. I am at chemo and I feel really worn down mentally from the fluid draining. I'll tell you guys about it in the car. I'm holding back crying. I don't want to cry in front of my nurse, but I'm sad. But we'll talk in the car. When I was hospitalized for my ban bad immunotherapy reaction, that was my room right there in that window. That's where I stayed for 15 days. How cute is this Wizard of Oz rock? Can you see it? It's Next to the one that says Mama, it's right there. It's like the Wizard of Oz. It's hard to get close, let me see. We are out of chemo, and it was a long day long here at City day, of Hope. yet again. And <laughs> where do we begin? Um, so uh, we went to the doctor. And oh, when I got my blood work done, sorry, sweetie. Oh, <laughs> when I got my blood work done, I didn't feel like fainting or anything, so it must have been the food, I guess, last time. Mm -hmm. You think, yeah, and my body adjusting to being done with steroids, it's I don't adjusting know. well, but this time it didn't, I didn't feel like I was gonna faint while getting my blood drawn, so that was good. Okay, your, your blood looked great, yeah, yeah, so body's adjusting well to steroids, yes. being off. Um, then we went into the office and we're all. You and I are nervous because we haven't heard anything, and uh, your NP comes in. He's always usually the first one to come in, and he was very quick and positive mm -hmm. and said, Scan looked good. Okay, yeah, so whatever. See ya. I just wanted to pop in. I gotta go. Um, good scan results. Good he scan said. results, he said. We still hadn't seen him at that point. Um, and then he said he'll. Um, and then he brought up, didn't he? The fluid? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he brought up, which is so funny, right before he walked in, I said to Jen, I wonder about the fluid. 
We haven't talked about that, and I wonder if that's what's causing this. And sure enough, at least what they're guessing, um, the fluid uh, increased a little bit, is what he said. Yeah, they and said there's more fluid than we would like, mm -hmm. so we're going to drain it and test it to see if it's infection or cancer. Am I yeah. correct? Or, or it could be just fluid. It doesn't oh. have to be one or the other. Oh. Yeah, it could just be fluid. Well, sorry for the people that I've texted making it sound that way. <laughs> <laughs> it could just be fluid built up because your lung is inflamed. So their guess is, or what they're hoping, what they're saying is, is this just, your lung has been struggling ever since you got your 30 doses of radiation. And I think, I don't think anyone really takes into account the immunotherapy that wrecked your lungs, your body, yeah, I think your it heart, did and your some soul. permanent damage. So for me, I'm not the doctor but I feel like that did some damage that is st your lung is still trying to recover from. Yes. And that, to me, could cause inflammation, fluid, all this stuff. Anyway, they said, hey, we're just gonna drain it, but we won't do it today because you've got chemo and da da da, and then of course, Jenny. They said, we don't want you to feel stressed out, like if you need to sit with it for a minute, mentally prepare for it. I said, no, that's fine. If that's what just you guys need to do, go ahead and do it. Yep. They're like, really? Okay, you're okay with today? Okay, we'll get you in. So that they got it scheduled but then um so we had to kind of sit with that info and then your oncologist comes in and very nice and positive as always and just says all right and he gets the scan papers out we both see it in his hand or i did and he said so scan looks good um but we don't like the fluid um and we have to decide if this chemo is working or not mm. so we're gonna we're gonna order a pet scan so i have to do another pet scan and we're gonna test the fluid, look at it under a microscope. Yes. And, um, but scan look good, but we're gonna just make sure that we're going in the right direction. Mm. And we're gonna have you test your blood again. So we didn't really get a full explanation, but we've been through this before. And Jenny, you said it perfectly to the nurse. It seems like when things go a little bit astray from the path, they test your uh, blood again to make sure you have the same gene mutation. So yes. they, can, they can go forward That's with that. That's what it seems like. So, so they're doing testing on my blood again. They're doing testing on your blood. He gave me the scan results. So, a quick summary down at the bottom where it just gives the impression um, enlargement, which is the word you don't want to see, but it was not on a nodule or anything, it was on the pleural effusion, the, the fluid. It said enlargement of that, um, currently moderate. So, they gave it a moderate rating, not severe, not mild, moderate. So, um, no change in her original guy tumor tumor and it actually noted for the first time I know I noticed in here this pathologist said I don't remember the wording it looks like leftover disease like dead disease that's really good that hasn't been said this whole journey um, suspicious for a post treatment appearance meaning um, like treatment's done and it's left its thing, right? <laughs> um, it hasn't done anything, it hasn't changed for now like four scans, so. Um, there was um, a little enlargement on some of the right lung nodules um, and they, they noted here could be cancer or it could be infection. At minimum, we suggest a follow-up. So they're suggesting to keep an eye on it, basically, which is I think why they're ordering the PET scan and why they're testing the fluid. Um, and then I was like, well, what does enlargement mean? So then I went into here and it went from 0 0.2 to like 0 0.3, 0 0.4 on a couple of them. Very tiny. So there's that. And then finally, um, stable uh, adrenal gland nodule that's been there since the beginning that's not cancer. So it's just the right lung little nodules is what they're noting. The right lung? Yep. Those got a little bigger? Mm-hmm. Oh, shoot. Yep. I was thinking it was the left lung. No, no, no. Left lung has nothing going on in it right now except for the... The right lung has nodules that got a little bigger? Little, the micro nodules that got a little bit bigger. That's not good. Microscopic. That's still not Do good. Do you know what zero point... So it's basically stable, it says. I don't want cancer in both lungs is what I'm saying. Well, they're not sure it's cancer. They went in, did the bronchoscopy in your right lung and didn't find cancer. But they didn't do a biopsy on those no. nodules because they're too small. But in three months for them to go from 0.2 to 0.3, I mean, I don't know if that's cancer or if that's not inflammation. I don't know. So 
that's where he's saying we got to make sure this chemo is the appropriate one because if the cancer is still able to grow. Sounds like I might switch to targeted therapy, but we're yeah, not sure. Which could be exciting. But overall, we're looking at, it, it noted no lymph nodes, nothing in the pelvic area, nothing in the neck area, nothing in the chest area, just the micronodules on the bottom of the right lung and the pleural effusion, the liquid. That's it. And when they took the fluid out of my lung, it was not very enjoyable. I went by myself. They used needles to inject lidocaine to numb it. Ooh. And I think it was at least three injections for it because he did one and then as he went in deeper with whatever tool I couldn't see, he said, tell me if you feel any pain. And I it was like, I couldn't help but to tell him. It was like, oh. <laughs> and so he's like, okay, more lidocaine. So he does another one. And he's going in again, oh, and then he's like, okay, more lidocaine. That was the time my knee had a reflex. Like he was going in and it hit something that hurt, some nerve or something. And my knee just flew my lower leg up. It, and he's like, don't move. And I said, I, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to. It was just yeah. a reflex, my leg did it on its own. But it, it hurt. The worst part was the needles for numbing going in. And then when they got the fluid, it didn't hurt. It was just the initial, him having to go through my ribs. He said that my ribs are very close together because I'm younger. Oh. And so it makes it a bit tight. And then like while he was getting some other tool, it felt like something was resting in me against my bone. And I went, whoa. And he said, yep, that's on your bone. <laughs> and it felt so freaky. Like it felt like someone was inside me touching my insides it was really gross Oof. but I got a picture of the fluid I said hey I'm gonna be that creepy patient and get a picture of the fluid he said oh don't worry a lot of people do it really yeah mm. I said I want to show my husband yeah I want to see it and I want to show the kids and he said that it wasn't that much fluid from what he's seen mm -hmm. he said he would almost not even consider doing this but because her doctor ordered it to check for possible cancer, he was like, okay. Yeah. But he said it didn't look like that much, but to and us... And then he, more, he ordered the extra vials so that he could do more tests. Which I think Not is sure what, for what. I think that's what came through today, like the glucose and the mm. protein and all that stuff. Mm. Um, but yeah. So that was a little curveball. Did all that. It was a lot more painful than I think you thought it would yeah, be. Yeah, when they were doing it, I almost cried, like while they were doing it, and I haven't cried during a procedure as far as I can remember. But it was so painful that I almost cried. And I was like, no, I will not do it. I will not cry in front of them. I will look tough. So I held it in and I made it through. And then afterwards I got an x-ray because they want to make sure that I don't have- Collapsed lung. A collapsed lung. And I'm sore, I'm tired. I'm gonna take it easy. You're gonna spoil me. Of course. You guys know I want comfort food and a movie. Oh, did you got approved for chemo? I got approved for chemo. We didn't say the chemo. I went to chemo. Yeah. <laughs> so after the drainage of the lung, then then we went to chemo. Went to normal chemo. They said they want to um, stick with the plan right now until we have to change. So when they test all this stuff, then we may change or may stay on. But right now, um, until they get any results, we're scheduled forward with the chemo. So she did that. Felt like poo poo. Um, but it was my f my nurse that I had for my first ever chemo. She was my nurse today, and she remembered. She you. was so nice. Yeah, she remembered me, and I remembered her. And it was fun to tell her everything that's happened because I haven't seen her since last year, when I rang the bell for completing chemo, and you know, she's like, "What are you doing here?" You know, it's not good to be back. <laughs> right, you can't say good to see you. <laughs> so I had to explain it all to her, but I enjoyed telling her everything because she's so genuinely nice. Isn't she genuinely she's nice? She's very nice. So that was nice. I'll think of more details to give you guys. Later. Later. I'm just tired. I want to drive home and get the kids. I miss them. Let's do it. Okay. Good job today, babe. Thanks. Thanks for being there with me. <laughs> Let's go home. I don't think we talked about steroids 
and I don't have to go back on steroids. Yay! That is a big win, and I'm so excited. I'm still scared that they're gonna change their minds. No. But right now I don't need to be on steroids. So yay! Victory! Kyle picked up food on the way to get the kids. We were stuck in traffic, so we thought we might as well pull over and get food. This is Waba Grill, which is tofu, rice, veggies, and avocado. I'm home and I got a little bit of time with the kids, barely. They were with my parents and I'm so grateful for my parents taking care of them and making them feel loved and happy while I couldn't be with them. I hate that cancer takes me away from Ellis and Winnie all the time. And you know, it's for a good reason. We're hopefully killing the cancer. I'm just sad. Yeah. I don't like having cancer. There's always something happening, always something going on. And it just, it's so discouraging. And, uh, it's hard, mentally and physically. I'm really sore from the, I don't even know what it's called. I need to look it up. The procedure to drain the fluid out of my lung. However it works, because it is not fluid in my lung, but around my lung, whatever that means. But it hurt. And it took everything in me not to cry during the procedure. And I know it's okay to cry during the procedure. Here I am crying in a video that I'm gonna upload on YouTube. So I know it's okay to cry. I was just embarrassed. I didn't wanna cry. I was self-conscious and I didn't wanna cry. So I held it in <laughs> and I was proud of myself because I didn't wanna show that side during that appointment. I don't know why. I'm already starting to feel a little bit of relief when I lean over. I haven't fully bent over because I'm sore, um, but I feel a little relief already. You know when you have a stuffy nose and you blow your nose and you get everything out and it's like clear breathing and it's like easier to breathe? It kind of feels like that, but in my lung, even though it wasn't phlegm or anything, it's just the fluid around it, it feels just lighter. So I'm happy, I'm grateful. I'm just scared. Kyle says the fluid is no big deal, not to worry. But it's kind of like when I was prescribed the oxygen at home, I, w I was like, oh great, this is it. I'm getting worse, I'm gonna start going downhill. And that wasn't the case, I was fine, and I love having the, op the option of oxygen at home. <laughs> but having the fluid, enough fluid in my lung to need, or around my lung, to need drained has me self-conscious and worried that things are gonna just start going downhill. And I need to stay positive. I'm just scared, I don't know. I've never had this, so it's foreign to me. It's new to me, I need to research it. I know nothing about it. So I'm just scared, you know. Hopefully it's okay, I don't really know. Maybe if you guys know anyone who's had fluid taken out and they're okay maybe it'd be nice to read that in the comments or if you yourself have, have had fluid taken out and you're okay that would be nice to know i know i'm okay i'm just afraid that i'm not going to be okay soon or something i'm just scared but i need to suck it up and get over it because I need to practice my speech for Saturday. We talked to my oncologist and my NP and they said they're gonna be there and Kyle's like, oh, Jen's gonna speak. <laughs> they're like, great, well, we'll have you all have us there with you, your friends. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be so embarrassing. I'm probably gonna like butcher everything. They're gonna think, what is she talking about? <laughs> No, actually, let's change the narrative on that. I'm gonna do great at my speech. I'm gonna 
memorize as much as I can and if I'm nervous I can just read it all off of my phone or paper it'll be fine I'll get my story across and I will connect with other people and it'll be great so <laughs> that's gonna be my new narrative I'm gonna do great okay well I think I covered everything I don't have to take steroids yay I'm so happy Kyle told me I need to ring a bell celebrating that I'm done with those. I'm still convinced they can throw it at me at any time, but right now I don't need them. And hopefully I'll stop feeling some of this pain from the fluid. Um, them getting the fluid, they had to put a few needles in me and then a catheter th through my ribs. So that didn't feel very good, but hopefully I'll start feeling better from that. And hopefully it'll relieve some of my breathing issues as well as some of my pain because I've been having a lot of pain lately. I already feel a little drop in my pain since getting the fluid released, so I'm hoping it'll only get better as my body heals from the removal of the fluid. Chemo went well, amazing nurse. I love her so much. She's like such a nice, real person <laughs> and easy to talk to and Again, my first ever nurse for chemo, so I, she's literally the best. I love her. And um, the kids were well taken care of. I didn't have to go get crazy scans. I had to get an x-ray after they took out the fluid just to make sure I didn't have a collapsed lung. But that was quick and easy, no problem. So everything's going well. I will probably catch up with you guys soon. I'm not sure if I'll catch up with you before the cancer walk or that day. But if you guys want to donate, I'll have a link in the description box. Or if you want to join my team virtually, you can be on my team virtually. I think it's like $35 a person to be on the team. And I'm not sure how you participate virtually, but maybe it'll tell you if you sign up and or you can go to the walk if you're in the San Dimas area. So let's raise some money because I might be on to a new round of treatment, I'm not sure, and I don't wanna run out of treatment options. So the more research that we can fund, then the more options I will have and other people will have. So please, please, please help support lung cancer research just as amazingly as you guys support me. You guys are the best. I love you guys all so much. I could not do this without you guys. I really couldn't wait to get home and sit down and have a real talk with you guys because it makes me feel better. It was like, I need to go home and talk to all my friends on the camera. <laughs> it's dorky, but it makes me feel better. All right, well, I love you guys. There's Shiloh. As you see, Kyle and I groomed him and he looks decent i think we like to shave most of his hair off because he it, he has curly hair and it gets stuck everywhere or it starts creating dreadlocks pretty quickly if you don't shave it short so it looks pretty good all right well i love you guys i appreciate you and i will talk to you soon wish me luck for the speech i need it bye Oh, and I came home all emotional to these flowers from my cousin Tracy. Look how pretty they are. They have a butterfly. I love butterflies. It's so sweet. I'm so grateful. Thank you, Tracy. And they have sparkles on them. You guys know I love sparkles. I'm so grateful. It really cheered me up. It really made me feel special. Thank you so much. I actually started crying. <laughs> when I saw him because I'm an emotional wreck today. And then this card, look at how cute it is. It's a bunch of cats and I'm pretty sure when he's gonna steal it from me. But thank you, I love, I love how much you encourage me and support me, Trace. You're the best. Thank you.